Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you five of the most essential time and speed effects like fast forward, slow motion, rewind, and time ramping effects for you to apply to your projects and videos. So before we begin this tutorial, I just want to say if you guys are not following me on Instagram, go follow me at Justin Odisho. I'm real active on there, answering questions, live streaming, and we're almost to 10k. So Go follow me on there and getting into this tutorial, I've got a variety of clips in my project media bin and a few things to keep in mind before we start is a note about frame rates. If you ever go to the info section, you can see what frame rate your clip is at. So this one's at 25 frames per second, 1920 by 1080. This one's a 50 frames per second. Every camera, as you see here, has different options for selecting what frame rate to shoot in. So the higher frame rate you shoot in, the smoother slow motion you can get. The average frame rate you see on YouTube and normal videos is about 24 frames per second. So when you shoot in 50 or 60, you can slow it down to 24 and that's how you get the smooth slow motion. Whereas shooting in 24, you can't really slow it down much more without getting a bit choppy. So with that being said, let's start off with our fast forward effects. So I'm gonna take this clip here and there's many different ways to adjust a clip's speed in Premiere Pro. So one of those is if you press R, it'll activate the Rate Stretch tool, which basically allows you to click and drag a clip in or out, and instead of cutting like it normally does, it'll simply speed or slow down a clip. So when I play that back, you can see the whole clip's playing in fast forward now. However, you can also do things like cut a certain section and only make that part fast forwarded if you want to do short bursts of fast forward throughout a clip. So you can see it fast forwards and it stops. We can do that again and fast forward through this other section. And now we have a bit of a fast forward effect where the clip is one speed fast forward, fast forward, and it stays again. This can be a useful way to stylishly progress through a clip or synchronize with music. Another way that you can make a clip faster is just by right clicking on it and going to speed and duration. And now it's at 100%, but you could take it to two, three, four, 500% and it'll just increase the speed likewise. So here's a clip that I've shot in 50 frames per second. So it's a little bit higher. And if I drag this on the timeline, you'll see that it'll ask us to keep or change our sequence settings. And we're gonna keep the existing settings. You see, whenever you go to file new sequence, you'll have a certain amount of settings. So for example, it's at the basic 23.976 frame. So I don't really want to make the sequence a higher frame rate. And if you don't have a sequence open, for example, if I were to click and drag this open, the sequence will be created based on the clip size, which is what you see here in the info tab. So you don't want to be creating sequences that are 60 frames or 50 frames per second if you plan to play them back at normal speed. So when you play a clip that's higher frame rate than normal, it'll just kind of look off to your eye. It'll look like your eye is getting too much information at once. And that's because it's recorded more frames per second, which means that we have the ability to stretch it out and it'll still look smooth. So there's a few ways to do slow motion as well. Like we said before, we can go and press R and stretch things out that way. But the problem with that is if you stretch it out further than the amount of frames that you have, then you might get a bit of choppiness like you see here. So we don't really know how far we can stretch it out when we press R. And we do get a percentage that says 8%, but it's a bit hard to do the math. Another thing is if we right click and press speed and duration, we can lower it by a percentage. So if we're working with 50 frames per second, then you can say about 50% will bring us down to 25 frames per second. So that's a good rule of thumb. If you're working with 60 frames per second, then it's more like 40%. But you can see that's gonna give us a smooth slow motion because we have those additional frames and we just stretched it out to a normal 24 frames per second video. Another thing you can do is interpret the footage in Premiere Pro. So whenever you have a clip, you can right click on it and choose modify you can choose to interpret the footage and you can interpret the frame rate into whatever you want. So you can interpret it to be exactly 24 and press OK. And then when you drag it on, you'll see that it's automatically going to be slow and smooth like you interpreted it. So that's perfectly 24 frames per second from 50. You don't have to do any guesswork. 
And just like fast forward, you can use cutting and mix and match different sections so that maybe only a small highlight of the clip is slowed down while the rest of it is still normal or fast forward speed. Now third, let's talk about reversing a clip speed so that it plays backwards. So here's a clip of me walking down these steps and if I right click and press speed and duration, you'll see that there's an option to check reverse speed. And what this will do is it'll just take the clip and flip it backwards. So now you see I'm walking backwards up these steps. So that can be an interesting creative effect to work with. And just like your regular speed, you can apply fast forward and slow motion effects onto this. So you could do a fast forward rewind, which I have tutorials on how to do a little bit more stylishly, or you could do a slow motion rewind. So the same principles apply and build on top of each other that we've been talking about with the fast forward and slow motion. Next, let's talk about how to do a freeze frame. So there's a couple of ways to insert a freeze frame. Let's say at this point, I want to stop and then point something out in the video and then resume playing. If I right click on my clip, there's options to insert a frame hold or a frame hold segment. So if I insert a frame hold, then the rest of the clip is just gonna be paused. You can see there. However, if I right click and I insert a frame hold segment, then you'll see that it'll just take whatever frame that the timeline is on. It'll insert by default a two second pause and then it'll resume playing. So you can actually stretch that frame hold out. So you can do a freeze frame and then get right back into the action. And that can be useful for storytelling and pointing things out. So lastly, we've talked about all these effects individually, but how do we gradually move from one speed to the other? Let's say we wanted to gradually go slow to fast without using a cut. So the way to do this is by using the time ramping features. So when you're working with a clip on the timeline, if you ever right click on the clip, go to show clip keyframes, and in the time remapping, you choose speed, you'll see that a new line appears on the clip. I can scroll into the track here to make it a bit larger. And on this line, we can add keyframes that control the speed, which you can see in the effects control panel. So if I add a keyframe at the beginning, I can also use the command key on my keyboard, hold that down and click, and it'll create another point on the line. But basically you can create these points and then drag these segments of these lines up or down. So now I have this section that you see is 300% speed, and then I can make this section 50% speed, and then this section will be normal. But you see right now it just stiffly moves from fast to slow right away. But if you click and pull these apart, you'll see that a gradual ramp appears. So now we go from 300% to 50% much more slowly and smoothly. This is how you can combine all of those effects and it's called time ramping. So I actually have full tutorials pretty much on all of these that go more in depth on the different ways that you can adjust speed. So definitely check those out on my channel. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. You guys can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho if you want to reach me. I'm real active on Instagram. We live stream on there, DMs, whatever. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.